So, so Lawrence just talked to the people inside the tavern, which it sounds like a lot of them are going to go for Donald Trump this morning. Obviously, he's not in Dixville, not uh, New Hampshire, because they historically all get together at midnight and they vote. And they did last night at midnight, and the winner was six to zero, Nikki Haley. And the interesting thing about this is when you break down who voted. The population. Well, forget about the population. There are four registered Republicans yep. who voted, and then two of those undecided mm -hmm. or undeclared. That's the population, six people. Well, for the, because <laughs> this is a resort area. And uh, what they did is because the resort, I think it was the resort was closed, they did the voting in the uh, living room of the Tillotsons. And apparently, according to uh, news reports, uh, chocolate chip cookies were served, and there was a gold <laughs> Retriever there. How cute. I mean, that is America <laughs> right there. The town moderator is named Tom Tillotson. His right. dad is the His one. His house. Who his dad started this tradition back in 1954 because everyone in that town, all six of them, were tired of driving 45 miles to the closest polling site. So they said, let's just bring it here. An AP reporter gave them this idea, and they started this uh, tradition more mm -hmm. than 50 years ago. And the moderator, uh, who's now the son of the man who brought it, Tom Tillotson, he said, we get our 15 minutes of fame every four years because, as you all know, it brings in journalists and media outlets from all over the world, literally. Right, that's what's great about Iowa and New Hampshire. It gets the spotlight over this period of time every single four yeah. year cycle. So I just want to bring this up. It's kind of interesting to see Nikki Haley sprint through with at least five different events yesterday. Right. Donald Trump thought he had a court case. Mm -hmm. They canceled it, uh, postponed till Wednesday. Uh, so he had one event scheduled at night. And two days ago, he brought in the South Carolina contingent that's endorsing him. Yesterday, he brought in his former opponents, who are now allies, to say, get on, they are now on board the Trump train, and listen to how they introduced him and let them know how they felt about the former president. Watch. Tomorrow is the day that each and every one of you is going to cast the most important vote of your entire life. This is a very, very important vote. When you step into that voting booth, you are going to be uh, signaling that we want crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country. We got to get him out. If you want to make America great again, vote Trump. There's one candidate in this race that understands how to make our nation more secure, our nation more prosperous. It's the person who did it when he was president before. That's Donald J. Trump. How many of y'all want four more years of low crime and high law and order under Donald J. Trump? Trump and Biden, it's a dead heat. It's going to be a nail biter of an election. We don't know what's going to happen. I'm in every one of those same general election polls. And I defeat Biden by up to 17 points. You go into D.C. with a mandate, a mandate to stop the wasteful spending and get our economy back on track, a mandate to get our kids reading again and go back to the basics with education, a mandate to secure our borders, no more excuses, a mandate for law and order in this country, and a mandate for a strong America that we can all be proud of. Don't you want that? <laughs> Only two strong candidates in Lawrence. Uh, behind the scenes, you see that Byron Donalds was there last night, Don Jr. was there last night, Corey Lewandowski was there last night, and he had three former opponents who are uh, immediately more than willing to say, I put a fight up, but this guy, the better man, won, uh, and I'm, I'm, on, I'm, on the I'm on board. Yeah, Brian, it, it's really about not just the surrogates, but where the energy is in the movement. Um, and. I think it's so hard for these candidates that typically would have gotten so much traction from yep. average Republican voters. But when you look at the rooms that I go into every single day, the diners, or where the, whether it's the rallies, or the people that are standing in the cold when the temperature is below 15 um, because they just want to see the man or try to have some type of interaction, that type of movement is hard to beat. Uh, but again, Things can change on election day. There can be people that show up. Uh, there could be this secret voter. But as I always say, when the diners and people on the ground, uh, if, if it's consistent with the polling, then I don't really look forward 
to upsets because right. it's consistent. But if it's inconsistent, then maybe something can happen. Right now, right. it looks like it's heading Stubble towards hit. the former president right yeah. now, Steve. Yeah. Good, good point, uh, Lawrence, regarding the polls. But the polls are, for the most part, uh, registered Republicans. And what is unique about uh, New Hampshire is the fact, and I mentioned this a couple of times yesterday, uh, you've got 300,000 Republicans, 300,000 Democrats, but you've got 400,000 uh, independents or undeclared. Uh, with the undeclareds, Nikki Haley leads, uh, but the problem with undeclareds is they are less motivated. And so uh, one of the uh, Koch brothers' uh, organizations, what they're doing is they're, on, uh, they're working out in behalf of uh, Nikki Haley. They have already knocked on 630,000 doors here in New Hampshire. They're trying to get 20,000 people to vote who vote in the general but don't vote in the primary. So that's the key. That's, that's the margin. They want to find 20,000 people who go to vote in November every time but never vote today. They want to get them to vote today. Trump has to keep that front runner status. Nikki Haley's trying to get those independents and people that are not necessarily the MAGA Trumpers. Um, New Hampshire voters, it's very suburban here. It's less evangelically yeah. conservative Republican primary as far as the electorate's concerned. And voters who are registered as undeclared can vote in this New York, right. in New Hampshire um, primary, the Republican primary. Now, Nikki Haley did see a spike, according to her campaign and donations, after Ron DeSantis dropped out. She saw a spike of 500,000 from grassroots donors online. She was campaigning across the state yesterday, vowing she's in this for the long haul. Uh, she'll be on our show today. We'll ask right. her about that, how long. If, if Donald Trump does win today here, so he wins Iowa, if he wins New Hampshire and the polls are right, what does that mean for her going forward? Right. Also, the president picked up, up the Catholic vote uh, yesterday that Brian Birch, a major Catholic organization, uh, signed on with him. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.